Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 412. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate... Might be episode 412, but it is officially baseball season in 2024. Baseball's next. Next up, we got next. Baseball season is now. Our turn. Now we go. Let's play ball. Let's play ball. Spikes on. See you later, football. Every year, every year, right after the Super Bowl. And I, I'll admit, I've contributed to those posts throughout the years, but I, no longer, no longer. I'm, I don't, I'm not doing it Over anymore. it? It's so, it, the trend no, needs to stop. This we get it. Weird, we're in this weird, like, depressive state of, like, you know, what do I do with my hands kind of thing. Just sit here. Not the Dodgers. Dodgers have been, uh, over Spring training clips. Dodgers been getting after it for a few days now, getting ready for the Korea series. But yes, baseball uh, is officially back. I don't. I, I mean, it is what it is. We we get to this point every year. It's great seeing the guys back and all that, and more more to come as the week progresses with uh, report dates. Yeah. Getting here the 13th, the 14th, 15th, even, I think. Um, but, you know, it, it it is what it is. Things really aren't going to start picking up. I mean, there's there's a handful of guys out there that don't even have a home yet. And what we got we pitchers and catchers reporting. So, you could, I, I think if we're being honest, there's a, a cap on how excited we can genuinely be at this at this point of the year. But here we are. Spring training is meaning less and less to fans and it's meaning more to players. You know what I mean? Like you were just talking about how guys are showing up early and I know the Dodgers like having that, the early series, but mm. that's just a thing now. Like players like show up a month before they're supposed to report. And I feel like us fans are like, I just get me to opening day. I don't care. Do whatever you need to do to get ready and stay healthy. I don't care. Outside of that. And I'm in a state where you can go watch games, which I will. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like we care less and less about spring training. It doesn't have the hype that it used to be, used to have. And especially with guys that like, sign, go, what do, do something. What are we doing? What are you waiting for? Cody there's like Bellinger. two top, there's one name in the middle of the lineup, and then there's two frontline starters. What are we doing? Why do they not have a home? What are we waiting for? Spend money, go get these guys. What team, outside of maybe the Dodgers, are saying, our rotation set, we're good. We don't need a center fielder who can also play first base, who also won an MVP, who can also hit in the middle middle of the order. We're good. What do you like? Go. Do something. How about that Super Bowl, though? Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I mean, what are we doing? We already it, knew. We, we already knew. We could see that coming from a mile away. America was rooting for the Niners. America. Outside so here's of the thing. Overweight people in the Middle East or in the Middle East. The, the, the yeah. middle. Yep. <laughs> the middle. Uh, Known the, football the fans out there yeah. in the Middle East. Um, yeah. Outside of the overweight barbecue drooling people in the Midwest. That was an un- unnecessary stray if I do was say it? so myself. Do we have some... If we have Chiefs fans listening to us. Look, I... Start. I just wanted. Team. I didn't want the Chiefs to win because 
I'm a, I'm certainly a Brady supporter and, and the legacy that that entails. But because of that, I, I didn't want Mahomes to get that much closer to even remotely touching that legacy. But I did want to see the Chiefs win just because I wanted to see if the internet would break with a proposal after the after the game. It happened. The ga- the Chiefs did win, but the proposal did not happen. So kind of kind of a lose lose there, you know. It's awful. It's awful, dude. I'm just I'm so done. I'm so done. I'm all done all the off-field garbage i don't want it anymore i don't want it like just play football let's just talk and watch football leave everything else out all the other stuff and it's just like we're just it's shoved down your throat all done no mas. Did you like any commercials? Let's get to some positive stuff. Did you like commercials? Anything uh, stick out look, to you? I've, I've said before, uh, I'll say it again. I don't even care that we're not uh, sponsored by them. I'll I'll throw free ads left and right for the, for these folks. Dunkin Donuts. Shout out Dunkin uh, for their superb collection of advertisements this Super Bowl season. I, I feel like superb is a very generous word. What was well, that Ben look, Affleck one? Nah, what was that? I'm, I mean, anytime you put Ben Affleck and Matt Damon in the same room, <sighs> it's it's bound to it's bound to happen. And then you throw Tom Brady in there. I I will say I I can do without the uh, what what is that girl's name? J Lo. Aren't are, no? I know J Lo. No, aren't they like twins? They're like TikTok dancers. Uh, Charlie Diamello or whatever her name is, Char- uh, Dixie Diamello, Charlie Dixie couldn't couldn't even give you a guess. The heart of Dixie, I don't know, one of, something like that. They they were in the series. Jack Harlow made an appearance, uh, and not to mention they they threw out uh, free iced coffee for folks this morning. Just snag one, yeah. Yeah, Smart. I did. Started my week off with a nice iced Duncan. Shout out Good promo code Dunkings. That was that was that was a big one for it's me. It's tough. It's tough. I like the couch potato one. Did you see that one for like Pluto TV or whatever? I did, yeah. That one was pretty I did good. See that one. That, that was, was pretty good. funny. I like that one. It's a little creative there. Yeah. Was that the one with Captain Kirk and uh Who else was in that one? I don't remember. It was one where they were like, it was like a farmer and there's like showing him like work in his land or whatever. And instead of potatoes, there was just like people sitting in dirt and they're like, have like a whole potato costume and there's oh, just a see TV in front of them. And they're just like watching garbage, like eating popcorn and stuff. And he's just like, like how oh, as a farmer's like lay in the land and work in the land and stuff. He's just putting TVs in front. He's like, we've been growing been growing couch potatoes for the last 60 years or whatever. It's funny. It's good. Yeah. On the whole commercials thing, it really started to fade. Well, I'll tell you what happened is it used to be a thing where shock value really drew people to certain commercials, sure. but everything is shock value. Now our, our dope as human beings, our dopamine receptors are fried. Yeah. Like you, we, you can't show us anything. You can show people streaking across the TV and we'll be like, sweet. Where are the snacks? Yeah. You know, like you can't, there's nothing that you can put up on the TV now where people are going to be like, wow, that it's is pretty incredible. Sad. Yeah. Especially sad. when, when the, the recipe now for a Super Bowl ad is like in a, a celebrity appearance. I saw a tweet where it was like uh celebrity appearance, a witty joke and a promo code or something. It's like, Rinse okay, repeat. that's, that's every repeat. year, every commercial, man, not even, well, do you have a, do you have a halftime show rating for Usher? Uh, it was, I mean, it was good. 
I didn't have anything negative to say about it. I, I will say, I think there was a lot going on with the back background dancers at first. Like usually they're all wearing the same thing, but when uh-huh. he first started, they were, it was like 30, 40 different costumes yeah. going on behind him. It was, that was a lot to process. Yeah. But shout yeah. out to my man for the roller, the roller skating. Yeah. That's big time. That's big time. That's tough. I get that. Like he, is a dancer and he was dancing a lot and like i get that like it proves that he wasn't lip syncing because he was like only singing like every 10th word of his songs do you notice that yeah that was man was working drenched sweating dude man was putting in the work he's got to be like pushing 60 at this point so he we looked up last night he is 45 Jeez, I would have guessed way older. Good for him. Good for him. I thought it was an okay show. I, I more singing would have done more for me, but I think like they he hit every song. Having yeah, like, he ran through his collection. Lil John come out. Ludacris come out. I think Fat was Fat Joe out there at one point. Alicia Keys like solid, solid. Yeah, millennials were 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 vibing. That's for sure. Can't yeah. say anything, or I can't speak for any other generation, but millennials were vibing. Yeah, it's a middle of the road performance. I think it it was good for halftime show. We're not going to remember it fifteen years from now. Uh, let's talk some baseball. Jose Altuve oh, okay. last week. Yeah, yep. Baseball season. Remember, sure. baseball is back. Baseball now. Now we go. We got next baseball on deck. Jose Al- baseball on deck. In Spring training starts now. <laughs> um, Jose Altuve signed a five year extension last week. Five minutes uh-huh. after our episode happens every time. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Every time. Uh, well, it was like the next day, I think, because we record. Oh, we record on Mondays. He signed it on Tuesday, so. Playing a little bit of catch up here. Five years, 125 mil, effectively making him an Astro for life. Do we like this move? Was it expected? I didn't expect it. I don't. Did you? Yeah, I. You did? I, I don't. I didn't see them letting Altuve go anywhere. How old is he? 33. So this takes him to 38. Um, I think just because of his stature, he's got to play like a style of play that doesn't, I don't see like really fading in his 30s. There may be some pop that starts to go, but like, I just like his tools, I don't, maybe a little bit of speed, but like even then, he's still an above average speed guy. So like it, I think he's fine. 25 mil a year may hurt at age 37, 38, but overall, like it's kind of like a legacy contract. Like, Hey, this is what you've provided the organization. You sell out jerseys, you sell out tickets. Like it's, we'll, we'll pay you. Um, yeah, I don't, I, it didn't like, surprise me i don't feel that fired up about it can we just just can we acknowledge the elephant in the room right now i hate him that's the elephant no the elephant in the room is i don't you say you're it doesn't fire you up i don't think anything's really getting you fired up right now you're wiped from the weekend so let's just let's get that out of the way yeah i was at the waste management open yesterday i'm pretty pretty wiped and the super bowl Right after, I I, going on? I can't even fault you. I laid around and did nothing but eat food yesterday, and I'm wiped. Too old for this stuff. Had too much pizza. Yeah, I I I don't know. I I guess it, it makes sense. Like it makes sense. I want to continue to hate you. I'm gonna continue to hate you. It's easier if you're in the same uniform for me. I'm sure, there's a lot of fans that share that. That sentiment. So, do you continue to just 
somehow can keep producing and just doing random stuff that steals awards from people and somehow they sneak into the World Series every year. They're like the chiefs of the MLB and I'm just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. So. Well, one thing we can say is that this deal uh, guarantees because this is, this starts 2025. So, Get, this guarantees minimum six years of continued trash can and buzzer jokes. Uh, the same recycled content that we've seen for the last uh, three, four years. Four three, years. Yeah. So that's what we're working with. I, I'm over it. I I really am. I I'm not I, like I'm not think, tapping into that. I know you're no, over no, it. No, I no, just, no, yeah. I get you know how I, I feel. Totally, no, yeah, yeah. I totally get where you're coming from. But I'm talking about the people that quite literally verbatim are recycling the same sure. jokes, the same jabs on social media, sure, as if we haven't heard them six thousand times to date, right? I totally get where you're coming from. You're kind of just staying in your, and I think. If we're being honest, I think a lot of people are like that. They've yeah. they've since rescinded their public outcry about the whole situation and they're just kind of in their in their quiet corner not liking him from afar. And I that's totally okay, but we got to we got to cool it with the with the trash can references. It's it's a little little tired. A little tired yeah. at this point. I'm excited to see um, where he gets that like weird two or three weeks of having the yips at second base. You know what I'm talking about? Every year happens every year, and every it, there's year. something like I like it. It's like a it's like a Chuck Knobloch thing where he just forgets how to do stuff. I'm just bitter, I guess. Let's. But who am I, I if I'm not me? We're gonna yeah, yeah let's let's yeah, try to find something in this list of topics right. that we've got today Keep that'll searching. maybe uh one one down no no dice on on Jose Altuve or the Super Bowl. So really two down, no dice. My last thing on that is that they still sure. s- came out and said that they're wanting to extend Bregman. Like he is a hundred percent like they're only seeing him as an astro. So even with this, yeah. And the hater signing. I would have guessed that they had to choose. You were either going to get Bregman or Altuve. I didn't realize that they're doubling down. They're saying, and you know, like, you know, Tucker's got to get paid too. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Because your Don's taken care of. Your Don's Altuve's, good. Altuve is now good. Um, and Verlander has how much left? You got to assume that's. They're probably two. I feel like it's two. I feel like they're going to structure things a little more backloaded for Bregman while they're carrying Verlander money until it's over. Then you'll see a pickup in salary for Bregman, I think. Uh, Vested option 2025, free agent 2026. So two more years. Um, vested's probably like an innings thing. It's got to be 140 pitched wow. this year, which, barring any injury, is pretty much a slam dunk. Yeah. Um. I, if you're the Astros, I'm all ab- I'm all about legacy moves and all that. But if you're the Astros, the much much more wise investment would be Kyle Tucker. No? Yeah. Yes. And if they if that's how the the decision goes where they keep Bregman and Altuve and Tucker moves on, I don't know Tucker's agent, but boy's going to get paid. Lefty pop plus defense, he's going to get paid. Maybe he maybe he's already came out and said he's not willing to extend. Maybe he's gonna, you know, maybe that discussion is just 
The Astros know that. Not even thinking about fit uh, positionally or like team needs or anything. Just give me off the top of the dome. What's a jersey you could see Kyle Tucker playing in if he chooses not to come back to Houston? With like no fit, just like how he looks in a jersey. You're saying just, just well, I mean. Like a team is going to need an outfielder. Let's just assume they're going to need an outfielder, but don't, don't like think breakdown. Just think vibes here. Just think vibes. Phillies. Kyle Tucker. Really? Okay. I don't know why. It just makes sense for me. Fits. Sandwich someone in between him and Harper as Bryce finishes out the middle of his 30-year contract yeah i like that weird right weird how you know because at that point i'm assuming schwarber's moving on i think castellanos probably it's probably all done at that point yeah yeah i hate to say it phillies the The phillies already probably need to shake things up get a little more athletic yeah they're already looking for ways to yeah chip him out yeah yeah, that's a. I like that. That's a good pick. Kind of off the cuff there, yeah. Right off the top of the dome. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, moving right along here. Signed a one-year contract that includes a player option for 2025. He will player not option. be back. Yeah, wild, right? Yeah. Especially with the way the last, uh-huh. what, four to five years worth of contracts for him has gone. Yeah. Uh, will not be back at least for the first half, but they're good. They're straight. They're chilling in that rotation. They're absolutely no fine. need to rush this man. This is any more than you a have to picture perfect scenario for him. And they're talking about Otani potentially trying to get back in time for the postseason. Here's what I'm going to say. That would be Dodgers fans out idiotic. there. I'm tired I'm tired of you throwing nonsense at my boy, Clayton. Shut it down. The man's a Hall of Famer. The man's an absolute legend. The man's getting a statue outside your stadium. Show some respect. Show some respect. I don't want to hear about postseason struggles. This man earned his contracts. He's earned his his ability to end his career as a Dodger. So do what you need to do, Dodgers, to make it work for Clayton. If it means no more giving him postseason starts, if it means he comes in the back back end of a bullpen and closes down a game, throws three innings, four innings, I don't know. I don't know. My man's a Dodger. It's cute. He's from Dallas. We could talk Rangers all we want. Fine. Fine. You can you can be upset, Ranger fans, but Dodger fans, no. This man belongs. He stays. He was never. He was be never nice. going to Texas. Let's be real. He was never going to Texas. I thought it was a possibility. I hear you about Dodgers fans complaining and calling him wash and everything. Look, I under, he had he's coming off of back to back years of sub three ERAs. In fact, I want to say sub two five ERAs in in consecutive years. Close, mm. if not sub two five. But look, man, we saw it last year. The the postseason bug is real with this guy. So so that at least I, I think is warranted. Um but yeah, I, I see both sides of it. Dodger I'm surprised legend. about the the player option. That's surprising. It is surprising. Um, Would have guessed a one year vesting option, but I guess with him coming coming yeah, back so, halfway through the year, it's like you can't really do that. Sub two five. He had two four six in twenty twenty three and a two two eight in twenty twenty two back to back all star years. Just a little. Just I mean, what are we doing, manage, Dodger just fans? Manage this guy. Just let him, let him get his rest. Okay, let's go full NBA mode. Let him do what he needs to do. 
How old is he again? And he's like your 35. He's like your seven starter. So calm down. Yeah, rough life. Clayton Kershaw coming in as like your spot starter <laughs> yeah. in the second half of the year. Tough. He's going to be 36 this year. He's He turns 36 in give or take a month. Hmm. I'm going to defend my guy. That's insane, dude. He's going to be 36 and we've been taught. Well, not we. People have been throwing the washed yeah. label out there for what seems like the better half of a decade. Just doesn't get enough respect. Wild. Don't get no respect. Uh, former teammate of Clayton Kershaw, Trevor Bauer, making news as of late. Specifically on Twitter. It seems to be where he makes... Most of his news, right? Uh, he he's been campaigning, come sort of, uh, dare I say, come out of his shell the last week mm. or two. Because there for a while he was he was a little little quiet, understandably so. But as of late, has really made a strong push, a strong public push, to uh, get his his name back out there again and get it back on the minds of these uh, front offices about a possible option in in their rotation uh, and has been making his pitch. He put, he put out a tweet the other day that said, Blake Snell is going to get hundreds of millions of dollars on a multi-year deal, and he should. He deserves it. For a team that doesn't want to commit multi-years, hundreds of millions of dollars, or many elite prospects for a Cy Young Award winner, they could sign me for a league minimum and pay zero incremental dollars over what they have to pay to that roster spot anyway. Just another option for teams that want to win and don't want to break the bank. You mentioned it uh, last episode. He's been making his rounds on the podcasts. Um, as I mentioned, just campaigning hard on on social media. And he's made it very clear. I don't remember what platform I saw it, but he was all but begging, saying, just just give me a chance. He's saying, I, I know that I'm capable of, of doing this. He says, I'm, I'm still, even after missed time, I'm still one of the best pitchers on the planet. I, I just want an opportunity to prove that with a major league team. And as we mentioned, pitchers and catchers are reporting this week and does not have a home. Do we think he finds a home? Before spring training or before opening day? Let's just say before opening day. I mean, he's so, I, I highly doubt he's going to find anything in the next uh, two to five, two to four days. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no before before opening day. Do you? He countersued like as like a defamation lawsuit, right? I believe so. I think we talked Was it about settled? that on here. Oh, that's a good question. Because follow me here. I've watched Suits. I know what I'm talking about. Exactly. If he. Oh, by the way, uh, Mike and Harvey made an appearance on the Super Bowl commercials. I did, did you catch see that? that. That was big fan. Big fan. That was cool. That was cool. That was cool. Anyway, continue. Um, if that case is not closed, if the defamation lawsuit has not been settled. This media tour that he's on, because think about how he's been. He's never really gone around and done stuff. He's got his channel and he wants his fans to watch. But rarely as he's like making rounds, dude. Like going on. You're talking like media, like the media rounds. Theo Vaughn has nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? So like he's going around. It's not just baseball podcast. He's going on that like Pat uh, Bev David or whatever that the financial guy he does podcasts. Um, Mm. He's going all over the place. So it's not just baseball related. I think in my mind, if this settlement is not closed, if he if that's still going. This is just more evidence because he's coming out and saying, I will I will literally play for league minimum anywhere you want. You name it, I'll do it. If he still can't get that, that is literally all the evidence you need for proof of defamation. You've destroyed my character 
That's what he's saying to this girl. You've destroyed my character to the point where I can't even do my job. Whether you like Trevor Bauer or not is a different story. I'm not particularly a huge fan of him. I know you're not either. It's just, it's not my, he's not my cup of tea of, of personality. Um, but I can respect the fact that from what, from what law is saying, he was innocent. And now he can't do his job anymore. This is the ultimate definition of defamation. And maybe it's a little bit of that as well. Yeah, I'm sure he wants back. I'm sure he wants to play. Duh. But this could also be a part of it too. Proving that say, I'm going everywhere. I'm telling everyone I'm willing to play for a bag of chips. And I still can't get a job because of what occurred. So uh, back in October, I'm I'm reading because it I a little foggy on the details here, so I had to had to pull it up. Back in October, which I be, I I feel like I remember talking about this on here. I just don't remember to what extent we covered it because I think some details are still coming out. But uh, it says here that Bauer sued a San Diego woman by the name of Lindsay Hill for defamation. She countersued for assault and sexual battery. Uh, it says neither side or no, it says their settlements calls uh, for no exchange of money between the parties. But the woman will receive a separate $300,000 payout from insurance, her attorney. Uh, so they have settled the legal dispute, I think, is was your original question. Hmm. Again, I said it at the beginning of the episode. I mean, say what you will about Bauer. Be he at the very minimum, even with being out last year and not being in the bigs, like or even he, you know, half a year before that as well. I I'm fully confident, as much as I'm not a huge fan of him, I'm fully confident he can step in and give you 140, 150 innings and be at the back end of a rotation that he could wake up and do that. He could wake up and do that. So the the risk outside of like a, a public relations standpoint is very low. It's whether you want to deal with the PR stuff, which is the obvious wall or block for and, pretty much all these teams. And I think a lot of these teams realize that. They're like, oh, league a minimum for this guy? Sign me up, but right. you can't because... Although that risk is essentially non-existent, the risk that does come into play is what you're talking about, is the the circus that comes with it in terms sure. of public relations. And with as negative of a light that he was under, regardless, regardless the outcome, there were a lot of takes thrown around by fans, by team or, or by teammates, by uh, maybe even league officials, if I recall, just e- everybody was thrown out their take on the situation, and it brought a lot of negative PR to this guy. And mm-hmm. I, even despite making the media rounds, like you were talking about, I don't think he's been able to shake that. And I just don't think these teams want to put up with it as as much as I think the majority of them recognize how much value he could potentially provide their team which is tough which is tough because again whether you like him or not according to our judicial system he is innocent and that's that's tough and this isn't the first time that we've seen guys with these types of allegations come back and pitch there's precedent again i've watched suits i know these words there's precedent you know what i mean like you've seen guys come back Seeing guys come back on this team, seeing guys come back on a lot of different teams that have had this dark cloud of off the field difficulties and be able to overcome it. Winning solves a lot, right? So there's just, I I don't know, man, like it's not like they need them, but like if you were to throw them on the Astros, this team is already hated around the league and you're already getting booed. Like why not? You know what I mean? 
add him into the rotation, keep winning, and just turn into this kid. Be hated. Make it motivate you. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's tough. I, I get it. I don't like him, but it is tough to see that like other players have been able to overcome this and step right back into playing. But because of the name and the magnitude of stardom that he had when it happened, that's hurting him. It's pretty weird. This whole thing's weird. I, I, assuming we have not seen the last of Trevor Bauer in Major League Baseball, I think it's almost inevitable that you're going to see a team who maybe at this current point in time is taking the moral high road again, regardless, regardless of what the, the legal outcome was there. I think the reason these teams are posturing the way that they are is to, to make, to give off the appearance that they're taking the moral high road saying, even though he was innocent at a legal level, we don't want to associate with somebody with this character, yada, yada, yada. But I think it's inevitable that a team is going to get desperate. Yeah. And they're going to they're going to push that to the side and say, yeah, morals, ethics. Eh, we didn't really care about those anyway. Who are we really kidding? And they're going to yeah. go pick this guy up and then he's going to go out and do his thing. And the 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 organization is going to forget all about everything that that he brought yeah. with them which I, i'm again it's it's really foggy it's really there's a lot of gray area it's really it's a very confusing situation yeah but i just think that that's going to be the end result that we're going to be faced with i under i i understand both sides i really genuinely do and yeah. if if you're a dad bringing your eight-year-old son to a ballpark and he steps onto the mound and the entire stadium is booing him and that eight-year-old turns and looks at you and says why are they booing him dad you have to have that conversation and i'm sure there's plenty of organizations that are saying we don't want that and i understand i genuinely do Um, but i do understand his side of it as well and i don't know if there is a right or wrong answer to this but maybe there is a team where the the fandom support or the immediate success that they may achieve could somewhat wash out the stink that he comes with. Because remember, look, aside from from this case that we're talking about or the suit or whatever, that you have to remember, he came that before this even happened. There was a lot of other crap that he mm-hmm. was that he was involved with, not yeah. maybe legally, but just yeah, the drone thing and with the, his with his hand getting cut. Yeah, the, the drama game. that just constantly followed him that was mostly self created. I'm not going to sit here right. and pretend like it was anybody else's fault, but it, I think you t- you take all these things you factor in all of these other situations that he's been caught up in. And I don't know. I just think, I think it makes sense why he still is without a home right now. But like I said, I think, I think somebody will get desperate and come calling. That's, that's Mm -hmm. my gut. Uh, Speaking of coming. Hang on. Oh, sorry. I thought I got a, thought I got an update. Say what? (laughs) Nothing. No, I said, speaking of coming and calling, Vegas mayor uh, said, no, thanks. You can keep your you can keep your A's in Oakland. We're good. We'll pass. Yeah. Which just adds a whole another layer to this. What seemed. Inevitable. A's moved to Vegas. She. She. Uh, uh, what's her name? Carolyn Goodman. She said, I've lived in this town six years. And so I know the town like the back of my hand. I personally think they've got to figure out a way to stay in Oakland and make their dream come true. I love the little Disney twist there at the end, but she is all but saying we're good. We'll pass. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. I'm so over this. Just go somewhere. I don't care. Go somewhere else then. Make this happen. 
Oakland isn't working. All 1,200 fans that are fighting for it can relax. I don't know. We were just, uh, we just FaceTimed one of our listeners the other day and uh, he's from Utah and he's like truly in his core believes that the A's are going to Salt Lake City. I can't see it. I don't, I don't see it, but I, at this point I could see it over Vegas. I mean, yeah, it, it seems like this is really trying to be shoved along and it's is it? not panning out. I, I mean, there's so many things to read in between the lines here. Is it maybe because it's still attached to an owner that refuses to spend? You can't go to Vegas and not spend. You know what I mean? Be, there's no other, like there was a stink around the Davis family for the Raiders. Duh, for generations, those guys are nuts, but they spend money and they're entertaining. The A's are boring and this owner does nothing. So don't come to my city and provide zero. He's got to sell. There's no other way around this. You got to sell. Get out. Your own city doesn't, I mean, your own city, your fans are fighting you. Your own city doesn't want you. A new city doesn't want you. You're the common denominator. Sell the team. Get out. Major League Baseball needs to take over this team and move it wherever you need to move it. But take over. Because this is embarrassing. It's honestly embarrassing. I don't know why this is coming out now. Like, I don't know if this mayor has been outspoken prior to this point, prior to this quote that dropped. When did it drop? Uh, like late, late last week. Oh, well, I, I mean, just before you the know, weekend. Super Bowl in Vegas. It's all eyes on Vegas. You know, no, no, no. I mean, I, I get it, but I'm saying, why, why are we now hearing these types of things, especially from people that you would just assume are in a position of support? for a move like this. If the mayor is going, yeah, I know, I know the whole uh, perceived scenario here is that you're closing up shop in Oakland and coming here, but uh, I, I never agreed to this. Mm -hmm. Then why were we so quick to wrap up the Oakland A's story like why why are we just shutting that down now because as of right now i mean not that the vegas mayor has much pull in this regard but like if vegas doesn't want you you don't have a home beyond the the lease of the coliseum right you're you're in a tight spot you're in a real tight spot sell you're gonna lose money but sell i don't know when he bought it or how much for but it's going to get to the point where the league needs to step in and take over, dude. Like this is, you look at the race, you know what I mean? Like everyone around the league, every other fan base is just absolutely trash the trap for right, rightfully so. But they're doing different things and you see an effort and you see competitiveness and you see a way to build an organization a way to build a franchise. To be fair, it's apples and oranges because of how old the A's are. But at the same time, you're seeing effort. And now look, right? Now there's plenty of conversations about moving stadiums into a new location, making it easier for it. Like this is it. You, you do this for a few years and you prove that you can do what you need to do. The A's are doing nothing. The A's are doing nothing. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel in any way. The, the the A's need to take the raise approach and like invest in yourself. Try to do it in a budgetary way. And you did it for a flash in the pan with Billy Bean and there's a movie made about it. But outside of that, there's nothing else going on. We're looking you, at two decades later from that, get, by the way. And you get freaking all-stars. That you don't pay, that you trade for bags of chips and rinse repeat. It's tough, dude. 
It's tough. You see other teams making efforts. I just don't, I'm, I'm all done. Dissolve it. I'm done with the A's. Change your name. Move cities. I don't care. But this owner has got to go. I saw Portland is making a push. They've been in the conversation for a while, but. Portland, Nashville, Charlotte, I'm assuming are all I actually, Salt Lake City I all just, in the conversation. Uh, yeah, I just put out a post today, actually. Um, it's a map. It's on Facebook showing all of the just <laughs> the the vast nothingness that is the United States when it comes to not having a major league team. Yeah. I mean, it, you've got your hot spots at all your various cities, but plenty like 90% of, plenty of, of the United States does not have a team, obviously, but it's just crazy when you see a, a visualization of where Major League Baseball exists, where it doesn't exist, and you you just look around the map and you're like, I, I could see a fit there. I could see a fit there. I mean, North Carolina could use a team. Nashville or you know Tennessee could use a team. Portland was another one. I just feel like any of these fits are better than Oakland. At the end of the day, any of these fits, even Vegas, with as uh, tumultuous of a relationship as that could end up being, yeah, probably is still still a better fit than Oakland. It's just, yeah, it's it's reached its end. But they have to they have to figure this out, and they have to do it in a way in which the city that's receiving them is actually like on board with it. And I think right. it goes back to your point of selling the team because I, I'm sure if I'm a city, yeah. I'm not wanting a team, like you said, that's just going to be continued garbage. It's weird that you have cities that are like, Hey, we'll take you. And you're just, you're not, you're not it's not getting approved or passed along. It's like Vegas. Well, yeah. Let's do I mean, Vegas. fish, I don't know. I don't know the guy from Adam, but it seems like Fisher is looking for the ultimate cash grab here. He's going, yeah. oh, Vegas, sign me up. And that's just Do you not- think he sells the second that the city says yes and just has that as like a, a bargaining chip, basically? Yeah, because I mean... As it stands right now, you're getting jack for this team. So like, yeah, spruce it up a little bit. Do some do some housekeeping. Yeah. Get the stock up a little bit and then jump ship. Just no, don't even jump. Don't even bother going anywhere else. Don't bother acquiring another team or going even to another sport. Just go just retire. Be done because you are clearly not fit to do this type of work. So. Yeah. Go, uh, go wherever you're going to go. Yeah. Hit the slots in Vegas, but stay away from the baseball field. That's all I got to say. Uh, closing the book here. Just a few items. Um, Billy Epler placed on the ineligible list for violation of IL rules, which I think is hilarious because I think every team does this. What team isn't doing this? Mm -hmm. The Phantom IL has been a thing. It's going to continue to be a thing, but I guess we're just using old Billy as the scapegoat here because because they're not in it for 2024. That's as true. everyone knows, self-admitted. Uh, Rays extend Kevin Cash, a move that Nate has seen coming down the pipe for years. <sighs> Big Kevin Cash guy, he is. Was it coming into this year that you predicted that cash would be gone after this year? I think, or this past 2023, I should say. Yeah. Hot takes episode last year. Yeah. So there's going to be one hot take that's just, it's always nails. And then there's one hot take where you can probably put your money on the opposite happening. That's how I roll, baby. That's how I do it. That's fair. You play in the odds. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Flip of the coin when it comes to that was to a Nate. plus thirty five hundred move. I put some money on it. It didn't pay hey. out. That's okay. Whatever. It was admirable. It was admirable. I'll give yeah. you that. Uh Red Sox will have a Netflix series made 
after their uh, 2024 campaign or surrounding their 2024 campaign uh, to be released in 2025. Uh, it's either going to go one of two ways. This is going to be the mo- the magical of magical runs uh, or it's going to be an entire series of the most depressing, heated, argumentative, uh, toxic baseball you've ever seen. That's... Yeah. That's really where we're at. It's There's not going to be much of a middle ground. It's going to be one of those two things. Um, Just a wild selection for your first team to do that uh, as... Yeah, I was going to say, I I support the decision. I question the selection of team. Um, I will still watch. I think this is great. I think it's fantastic for the game of baseball. I think this is exactly what we've been asking for for a long time. You're seeing these behind the scenes. We've seen it, you know, hard knocks and stuff for football for years, decades now. Um, you're starting to just see other sports get into it. So with full swing and getting, you know, the behind the scenes in in golf, um, the F1 series and behind the scenes in that, um, NASCAR, I think, has a similar one. It's, you're getting these behind the scenes raw documentary style things. I'm a huge fan of them. I love them. I'm excited for it. I think it is interesting to choose a team that's not in a great position right now, but either way, I th- I, th- I think it's good for baseball. I mean, it's it's very possible that that's they knew that going into it. They, Maybe they knew I, like I this is going to be so. a dumps. This is going to be a dumpster fire. Let's let's get it on camera because right. the other thing too is the Red Sox aren't going to have final say over the the. Uh, the content that goes into this, like they're not going to, if, if there's a, if there are uh, Gatorade coolers thrown in the clubhouse after a random June yeah. game where the Yankees blow them out 63 to two, uh, the Red Sox can't be like, yeah, we need to, we need to take that out. And that's yeah. like, uh, go kick rocks. Also find a smaller clubhouse for a Netflix crew to come in with cameras. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> How, where, where are you going to? You, you'd have three people that are allowed to work this the entire documentary because there's no room for anyone else. A lot of questionable decisions went into this. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of the Red Sox, cl- closing our closing the book segment here, Corey Kluber, opening day starter for the 2023 <laughs> Red Sox, is calling it a career. That's got like I can't imagine <sighs> that scenario happening too many times, right? a guy is your opening day starter. And then at the end of the season retires, that's the state of the Red Sox. That's what that's, that's the kind of news that, that we're making. That's where we're at. Nice. Come on in. The water's fine. Yeah. Nice career though. Nice career. Corey Kluber. I, the, the, uh, very good, very good stretch of being a top five pitcher in baseball for two or three years. Um, I just he didn't age very well and he didn't recreate his craft in any way. But um just a tough last three or four years of a career. But it during his peak, during his prime, it, it, it was fun baseball to watch. Those the Cy Young Cleveland days. Good, very good baseball. I think he probably would have gotten more love if if the Indians at that time were better. If they just got over the hump a little bit more. There's a lot of people on social media outing themselves uh, in regards to how or the amount of baseball that they watch or that they're aware of if they if it was before their time. Because I think it was Heyman put out a tweet and he re- he made reference to him as Cluebot and all the people in the replies are going. We're oh, not just going to for a typo again. Yeah, they were going, we're not just going to pretend like you didn't just say clue bot. And then they put like the clown emojis and like the crying, laughing emojis. And I'm like, oh and, boy. And <laughs> credit credit to the people that came to the defense of Heyman. They're like, you, the baseball fans. You, you do know that's like his nickname. They were screenshotting the baseball reference uh, bio mm-hmm. section. 
and all these people just really outing themselves as to how little they know about Ugh. some of these guys. Uh, but you mentioned a great career. It must must have been nice. I didn't really get to witness much of it. I I mean, we got the we got the crumbs of it. Um, <laughs> in regards to you got a no hitter with the Yankees, so swan song. Take that. Well, no, I'm as you know, I'm not a Yankees guy, so I'm I'm talking like firsthand. Yeah, you you got real the we real the, tough end there. We got the true crumbs. Uh, that about does it for closing the book. Wanted to wrap up here with our, with continuing our Unbreakables record mini series here. Today, we've got Hack Wilson. Mentioned him on the last episode. Alluded to it a little bit. The most RBI in a season all time. I think I... I may have said it on here, but do you remember? Do you, do you do you know how many it was? I don't. I want to say like 183, but I feel like that's low. 191. Hmm. And so I've got some career numbers here for you, but I got a little bit of a story time. I I I was reading in my research. I read this article from the Guardian that I just had to share because what year really, was this? Did he do this it? would have been 1930. Okay. 1930. Uh, so career Hall of Famer. He was voted in by the Veterans Committee in 1979. Um, I believe he passed away in like the 40s. So it was it was a while before he, uh, he got the honor. Uh, it was an MVP, played 12 seasons, accumulated a career war of 38.7, had 1,461 hits, 244 home runs, he hit 307, had 1,063 RBIs, had an OPS of 940, and an OPS plus of 144. So, a little bit of a a short kind of stint a in yeah. in acquiring these numbers, but rather impactful. Uh, but let me just read this bit from the Guardian. Bear with me. It I I couldn't stop reading as I was reading this this article. Born in Pennsylvania Steel Country, his parents were alcoholics and Hack followed suit. He always insisted he never took to the field while drunk. While hungover, that was a different matter. I never took a drink in my life on the day of a game after 11 o'clock in the morning, he once said. For Clifton Blue Parker, author of a fine biography of Wilson, fouled away, he was, quote, the roaring 20s epitome of a baseball player primed for an age of American excess. Hack's mother died from a burst of panic when he was seven. He left school at age 16 and worked 12 hour days at a print works, then signed for the minor league Martinsburg Blue Sox in West Virginia. Suffered a broken leg on the opening day of his first professional season, which prompted a move from catcher to the outfield after his recovery. Wilson worked as a label stitcher in a stock factory in the sure. offseason and married at 23 to Virginia Riddleberger, a divorcee or a divorcee for of uh, twelve years, his senior. Hang so on. After the old, after the older woman. <laughs> Whoa, dude! Hack, hack, hack! Likes him old. Uh, Wilson made his ma- major league debut with the New York Giants in 1923. Acquired his moniker. His real name was Lewis, and drew comparisons with a slugger across town named Babe Ruth. In appearance, batting prowess, and relish for extracurricular activities. His unusual physique fascinated contemporary sports writers, while more recent analysts have speculated that it was caused by fetal alcohol syndrome. Hack was only five feet six inches tall, but heavy with a large head, tiny feet, and small arms and legs. The baseball writer Lee Allen wrote in 1961 that Wilson was a comic figure, a pudgy Goliath, a gorilla of a man with a red face who looked like a sawed-off Babe Ruth. Acquired by the Cubs in the late in late 1925, he flourished in the bedlam of Prohibition-era Chicago, where Parker wrote he was, quote, on friendly terms with Al Capone. He was once arrested when police raided a speakeasy. The story goes that he tried to escape via a window, but got stuck halfway through. Standing in a line a few days later, Parker recounted he got into a shoving match with two policemen charged with disorderly conduct. He was taken to the police station where the captain, a baseball fan, 
drop the charges and actually order the officers to apologize. Almost done here. An early scouting report is said to have described Hack as possessing, quote, homicidal tendencies. Parker wrote that Wilson once drunkenly trashed a hotel room in Boston and shoved an umpire. He punched one Cincinnati Reds pitcher during a game and knocked out another at a train station later that night. The Chicago Tribune reported that during a game at Wrigley Field in 1928, Wilson lunged into the stands and choked the hell, quote, choked the hell out of a heckler. Wilson was fined $100 by the National League and the fan, a milkman, sued Hack and the Cubs for $50,000. I'm just going to let that let that sink in for a little bit. Just that was a lot to process. The amount of nuggets in there. I wow. mean, what a story time. Hack Wilson. I I'm glad I found, I came across this article because I had no idea. I was like, wow, 191 RBIs in a season. That's impressive. Good for Hack. Well, let's do a little bit of a deep dive into Hack's life. And we find out that Hack. And this man made his way into the Hall of Fame. I I think the the voters but, came across this article and were like, sheesh, this man's a legend. Vote him in. Yeah. Vote him in. Forget the numbers. Bro, what? Did I what did I just hear? It's it's a heck of a it's a heck of a piece. Hold on. Hack Wilson. If you guys want to read it, uh just type in Hack Will. Yeah, just type in Hack Wilson the Guardian, and it should be the top article that comes up. Just a, an insane read. So we got uh, guys anyway. that uh that may be a little too demonstrative with their political views that can't get into the hall, but this guy gets in. This man wreaked havoc. Goodness. I mean, he was on friendly terms with Al Capone and we're going to talk about a character clause. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, man. The hall is with fame. a murderer and a <laughs> just, and a thief just a continued uh just continued proof that the the committee the hall of fame as a whole is becoming more and more of a joke as we come across information like this oh Uh, hack 191 rbis um as with a lot of these records that we've we've uh researched there was a little bit of gray area in terms of the correct number that was attributed to him sure uh it said he was originally credited with 190 but a it says a quote rather tardy review determined that an rbi should have gone to hack uh it was actually wrongly given at the time to a teammate and his tally was boosted to 191 in 1999 um yeah i mean i i want to know what the scorekeepers were doing back then i want to know how many errors were listed as hits that's what i'm saying man the record books are not when the you know like when did the rule come of like a double play doesn't count as an rbi you know what i'm saying like i i just i feel like there's a lot of things that maybe adjust it either way i mean even if we're off a little bit he's probably still in the in like the 170 range, which is absurd, but yeah, dude, there's, there's a lot of gray area with some of these stats. That's like, it's not just a home run. These, this, the RBI has been adjusted multiple times. So interesting. Not to mention, wasn't it, wasn't it the, uh, what was that rule? The, the ground rule doubles counted as home runs or something, or like if the ball yeah, bounced over weird. the fence, it was a home run or something back on babe, the babe's yeah, day. Something weird like that. So that, I mean, that's kind of what we're working with here. Um, to put it into perspective, Hank Aaron, the all time leader in RBIs averaged just under a hundred for his career. His highest single season total was 132. Mm-hmm. I remember when we were kids, we watched a lot of one thirties and one forties like a good amount of time. And the MVP was always in the above like 120. 190 is different. Only nine times in the entire history of baseball has someone finished a season with 170 or more. And that hasn't happened since 1938. 21 times we've seen 160 RBIs. That hasn't happened. Or no, that's only happened twice since the 1930s. 
150 RBIs have only happened an additional seven times since the 1940s. Hmm. But here's the thing, though. If you look at his 1930 season, you probably assume like, oh, the guy had like 112 home runs or something. He had 56. It's pretty good for a stubby little guy. Wow, that random number that I threw out, I think, is exactly twice the number he actually had, right? 56 times 2, 112. Crazy. <clears throat> Look at that. Good for you. Insane. He he hit 356, 56 home runs, 208 hits, and 105 walks. So it's not like he's just putting up these numbers, uh, aside from the RBI, of course. It's not like he's putting up these numbers that are just gaudy and mm-hmm. unattainable. Like, yeah. That's that's very doable. I mean, that's a MVP season for sure. But I yeah. mean, those numbers individually are very attainable. But it's it's a matter, as we've acknowledged, it's a matter of who he has in front of him. And he, from all accounts, had guys that, yeah, right here. It says the guy setting the table for for hack, Kiki. Coiler, Woody English, and Rig Stevenson. For sure. Yeah, of course. They all had OBPs of over 430. Okay. So that right there is your but on, explanation but on as, as to how he reached 100 and what was it? 191. Bro. The description of this man was entirely just over the top. I looked up, I'm looking at pictures right now. It's like, it's not even that bad. Like he, he doesn't even look that bad. Of, I mean, he's a, yeah, yeah. He's got a big head for sure. I mean, he, it's a very unique build. I'll, I'll give him that. He was only five, six. And to read through the quote again, he was described as, quote, a pudgy Goliath, a gorilla of a man with a red face who looked like a sawed off Babe Ruth. That's insane. You're not saying that to his face when he's alive. That's what I'm saying. You look up pictures. This man will break you. A sawed off Babe. Yeah, look up pictures. A a sawed off Babe Ruth. You're not saying that right there is the 1930s edition of a keyboard warrior. Like, you're not saying that to his no. face. No. That writer back in 1930 had a little bit of a little bit of Twitter fingers going on. Like, chill. Yeah. Being stuck in a window of running from the cops is just a sprinkle of a detail in that, that, that biography, that's absurd. This whole thing, this man is just different. I've never, I've never heard of anything like this. Why, why, why have we not seen a movie? That's what I want to know. And I need why to is find... it Danny DeVito playing him? <laughs> I need to find a book on this guy, dude. I read this article and I was like, I just want to, I don't even want to record the episode. I just want to go read about Hack Wilson's right? life. Goodness. I mean, that, that. Those par- those few paragraphs I read you, that's like a full on you're right. That's a full on so movie there. script. Yeah. A lot that to needs work to with. happen. A whole lot to work with. Found Let's get Danny a DeVito wife. On. <laughs> Let's get yeah. Mary the Cougar. Let's get Danny DeVito Man. on the horn. Let's get this. Let's get this in the works. Uh Good that's stuff. all I got. That was that was fun. That's all I got, unless you got anything else for the people. I don't got nothing. Heck of a day for the 3 0 changeup on Friday. We released the changeup, yeah. I think, like Thursday. For you. And then Friday night, for those who aren't familiar, we dropped the changeup and it was on fast casual dining. And in the episode, we referenced how Five Guys was just a, a never misses and how Panera is like overpriced hospital food. And where mm-hmm. do we end up collectively? Uh, on Friday night with our respective significant others. Nate ends up at Panera. I end up at Five Guys. I was forced into mine. Yeah. I recommended mine. Just a, yeah. a real, real tough night. I got Nate. the, I we talked about, I told her, I was like, you know, 
We just talked about this. Kyle and Meredith went to five guys. And I got the pity. Oh, I guess we can go there. I'm like, no, no. And now did no. you say did you tell her that when you were already at Panera? We were on the way. Yeah, no, we gotta that's, drive through you get, one that's like right down the street. She you was, gotta uh, say that before you leave. I know, but I just I didn't feel I didn't have the energy. And she wanted bread. That's all she she's just like, I just need bread. And I'm and like, that's well, where you get it. We're going to the right place. I had this I and I will be honest, it was expensive, of course. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. The broccoli cheddar soup was decent. The sandwich yeah, that I that, got, that decent. Yeah. But for two of us to eat there for $36 or whatever is insane. Insane. Another uh, note on prices, dude. I went to Tropical Smoothie, another place we briefly mentioned. You're just on making your rounds. The fast food. Working your way down the they list. They hit me up with a birthday smoothie. And there I'm like, uh, my birthday's in October. Don't but question thank you. It. Don't question it. I didn't it. question it. I showed up and dude, the smoothies there are insane. It was $7.50. $7.50 yeah. for a smoothie. Yeah. Yeah. I I couldn't do it. I couldn't tough. do it. I mean, it's free, so I did it, but, but you did if yeah, I'm yeah. If I'm sure. paying, I'm not I, I I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Can't do it. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get out of here. That's all I got. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Adios. Don't go chasing curveballs. We love you on as always. Looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.